Ravens are the biggest winners in the AFC North this offseason. This is a team that consistently is going to be in position to contend because of how talented they are. The reality of it is those guys can play. In the AFC, so watch out for the Baltimore Ravens this season. Players in the NFL, certainly one of the best players at quarterback. They got a guy at tailback in J.K. Dobbins, who I think could be an all-pro. They got one of the best tight ends in football, a plethora of perimeter weapons, some health on the offensive line, a very good defensive line, one of the better young linebackers in the NFL in a top five secondary. And no one talks about about Yo, what it is? Welcome back to another episode of At the Bank, a Baltimore Ravens podcast. Dougs, you feel me, man? This episode is going to be dope. You feel me? Because I have a, a particular position that I had to talk about. This particular person, man, and and this is the reason why that this this segment is called no hell to the queen um as we already know that in the game of chess the queen is like the most powerful piece on the board you feel me and by the queen being the most powerful piece on the chessboard so the prospect is sacrificing it invokes an imperial excitement along chess enthusiasm there is something satisfying about giving up the strongest piece on the board in order to checkmate the enemy's king, you feel me? And I think that this is where the Ravens and Patrick Queen is at right now. Uh, as we already know that the Ravens has declined Patrick Queen fifth year option, which means that this year that he's going into, he's this is pretty much his last year. He has the ball out. He has to show that the Ravens that he belongs back with another contract and, and a, a nice healthy contract in my opinion. And I believe he do uh, get a nice contract. I believe he do come back to the bank and play with us. You feel me? And this is one of the reasons why uh, I was a little disappointed when the Ravens had declined his fifth year option, man, because number one, he's going into his fourth year season, his fourth year. Um, he was drafted in the first round, pick number 23 out of LSU. Um, he is a six foot, 232 pound linebacker. And like I said, uh, he's a little undersized, just a little bit, not too much, but he's, he's a little undersized, but remember that Ray Lewis was drafted and they called him undersized. And we kind of seen where that left us <laughs> hall of fame, baby. But before I even go deep too far down in the road, uh, for Patrick Queen, let, let's let's talk about what he's did previous in the last three years. You feel me? And why I believe that the Ravens should go ahead and sign back um, Patrick Queen. Um, in three seasons, as Patrick Queen has played with the Ravens, he has 213 solo tackles. 108 of them was assisted. He has 10 tackles. He has five uh, fumble recoveries, and he has three interceptions. And he also led the team last year. And tackles, you feel me? I understand it wasn't that high of a tackles, and he was probably ranked like maybe in the top 100 in linebackers when it comes to tackles because he only has 79 solo tackles, 38 was assisted, five sacks last year, one forced fumble, two fumble recoveries, and two interceptions. I think that Patrick Queen um, is on a limbo in the Ravens' eyes. Um we already know that EDC has said he wants to sign and, and retain Patrick Queen for multiple years. He believed that Patrick Queen is, is a Raven for a long haul. He believed that uh, Patrick Queen should get another contract here. But I think that now that we just signed Lamar, kind of put our money in the fickle just a little bit. At least this year, I believe. But puts our money in the fickle this year. And it's going to leave... Patrick McQueen may be the outside looking in. And him being the outside looking in is, is going to be kind of tough on our defense, in my opinion. Because, like I said, Patrick Queen, he, he, I, I believe in him. I believe that he can get things done, and I believe he will get a big contract. And I'm just hoping that it still will be here in the Flock Nation, you feel me? Um, But at times, it was at times that – uh. Patrick Queen looks like it's like God, man. I don't know about a first round on this guy, man. He 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 has the attributes. He has everything that you need in a linebacker that 
that that you you just you just put your faith in them. But then as at times it's like, um, oh, man, how did you get beat? How can you not play the tight end? How come you not hitting the gaps as as strong and explosive like a linebacker is supposed to be doing? You feel me? Like what is what what is Patrick Queen doing? And at at the beginning of his career under Wink Martindale, I think that's where we seen Patrick Queen. Patrick Queen was trying to struggle. Well, was struggling. Wasn't trying. He was struggling to figure out where he was on that Wink Martindale defense, man. Because you got to think, man, Wink Martindale was a gambler. He was a guy that he doesn't mind sending the house on third down or any down in, in that particular. You feel me? It was whenever he was ready to send that blitz, man, you have to get home. And if you can't get home, man, that defense looked trash. And I think that's where Patrick McQueen – was falling short at. Now under I like I like Wink. I swear I like him. Um at times I kind of wish that we didn't get rid of him because he most definitely put his imprint on the defense. He was the defense. You know what I mean? You can tell that that was his create his creativeness, his creative oh man, tongue tied. That was him creating plays. I'm sorry if y'all couldn't get the word right. And if y'all can get the word right, go ahead and tell me, you feel me? <laughs> but um it was it was him being creative. It was um it was him. It was just his blueprint. And you could just tell because you can see how it transitioned from here to the New York Giants. That you can just tell that it fits the Giants scheme and what they were trying to do. As far as the Ravens that is trying to take that next step into that defense, it wasn't helping us because uh I think where we failed that under Wink Martin, that we didn't have a good pass rusher, edge rusher. You know, once we lost Matt Judon, I think that's where our edge rusher started slimming some. You know what I mean? And then, you know, with Patrick Queen's uh, speed, agility, and able to get the sideline or sideline as fast as he can, um, I think that's where he got lost. He, he's, he, can he blitz? Yes. You know what I mean? Can he hit the gaps? Yes. Can he read coverages? Sometimes, yes. But I just think that that Wink Martindale defense was a little bit too advanced, a little bit confusing for him. And it really didn't fit his skill set. That's just my opinion. You know, and now, um, so he, at times, like I said, he looked bad playing coverage. He was getting beat by tight ends. He was getting beat by running backs out the backfield. And I just think that he was just trying to over-pursue at times and try to be home too early. You know what I mean? You don't have to over-pursue and try to be home early just to be there. I believe that Patrick Queen has that speed and has that agility to get sideline and sideline. He shouldn't have to overplay. But at times he did overplay and he overplayed himself out of the uh, out of the plays. You feel me? And like I was just saying that I, I believe that he wasn't – he was getting caught hitting gaps. I believe he didn't have too many moves and didn't have too many things to do once he met a lineman. Cause you already know once a lineman clamp his paws on you, boy, you ain't going nowhere. It is hard. Or once a lineman has a nice speed that you're not going, you're not running through him. You you have to kind of nimble and trick a lineman. You know what I mean? You have to show him one way and then cut back another to make that defense, uh, make that running back force his way back into the middle of the defense. And I think that's where Patrick McQueen, uh, Patrick McQueen, Patrick Queen was having struggle. It was like he was just hitting. The lineman and the lineman were just taking them out to play versus him trying to actually try to fake the lineman out just a little bit, you know, show him one way and force the, the running back to go back inside to where the help is. Um, and, and and that comes to, to him not making right decisions. And now, this, like I said, this is under Wink Martindale. This is everything that I have been seeing under Wink Martindale, you know, in his first two years. Um, it, it was a little frustrating. And I also think that us Ravens fans, us Flyers, put a shoe on Patrick, uh, Patrick Queen that was way too big, too early, too big. We tried to give him that Ray Lewis shoe. I, I feel like this is where the Ravens kind of always go wrong when we draft their linebackers, is we look up to them to be a Ray Lewis replacement. You know, I mean, Ray Lewis has been gone for multiple years now, multiple years. Uh, and it is, it is to the point that I understand that Ray Lewis, yes, he was the face of our franchise for pretty much his entire career in, uh, as a Raven. 
pretty much. You know what I mean? He had to build his way up and um, to get to the, be the face of the franchise. But, yes, he was the face of the franchise. And, you know, it, it's just like after year after year when we get a linebacker in, it's just, is he Ray Lewis like? Is he Ray Lewis S? Is can he live up to Ray Lewis and this and this and that? And I think that that's what Patrick Queen was trying to do, was trying to live up to a Patrick, uh, trying to live up to Ray Lewis hype, but just too early. You know, what I mean, Ray Lewis wasn't Ray Lewis in the beginning of his career. It took him, it took him time. It took him how to study the game. It took him how to study the opponent. It took him how to read the offense for him to become Ray Lewis. And, and and that's where our linebackers have to take uh pride in is not trying to be Ray Lewis so early. Ray Lewis, what like I said, Ray Lewis, what Ray Lewis so early. So for these guys to sit here and and, and try to put his shoes on, it's not going to happen right now. It is not going to happen. You feel me? And I believe Patrick uh, Queen can get to a Ray Lewis s type. Is he going to be Ray Lewis? No. Should we look for another Ray Lewis? Eh, we can look for him, but what's the chance of another Ray Lewis is going to be in that draft? What's the chances? Slim to none. You feel me? And 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 I think that's where the Rave is going to have to kind of just lower that expectation just a little bit, just a little bit, because before Patrick Queen, we had C.J. Mosley, and I thought that C.J. Mosley was a was the perfect fit. To be uh right after Ray Lewis. Perfect fit. He had the size, he had the speed. He played in Alabama where there's a pro style defense. So it was like it was easy to translate him into the um NFL into pros. But CJ Mosley was after that money. No, no shame. No shame at all. You gotta get your bag while you still can. But now that CJ Mosley gone, it's like we went right back to trying to find Ray Lewis replacement. And like I said, uh, that 2000 defense would never be replaced. We would never see that again. I don't care what team it is. We would never see dominance like that again. We can come close to seeing dominance like that, but we will never see dominance like that again. So that's where us Ravens fans have to get that out of our head, man. And we, like I said, I don't want to have to lower the bar just a little bit, but that bar is set way high for any linebacker that's going to come in. Can that linebacker maybe achieve it? It's a possibility, but it's going to be tough. And like I said, that's where Patrick Queen was was trying to figure out, can he meet that expectation, especially on the Wink Martindale? And in my opinion, no, he didn't. He didn't go to no Pro Bowls. He didn't. He was leading the team in tackles, but it wasn't enough for him to be looked at on the outside. You feel me? Us Ravens fans believed in him and, and, and wish him the best and everything, but that was pretty much it. You feel me? And once he teamed up with Mike Madonna and um, Roquan Smith last year, Patrick Queen game has has took a next step. He was able to not be um, the guy that you have to look for on that defensive side because now Ro- Roquan Smith is taking that challenge. And once those two paired up, in my opinion, I believe that these two can be the best duo linebackers in NFL right now. You know what I mean? It's it's a it's a great list of line, duo linebackers right now in the league. But I think this year, Patrick Queen and Roquan Smith will be the top five, top five duo linebackers and as far as going to be tackling, as um, far as forced fumbles, uh, uh, fumble recoveries, all that. I, I really can see that. And then another year under Mike Madonna is, is going to be a, a great a great uh, fit and a great addition to Patrick uh, Queen's resume because now Patrick Queen is comfortable. He, he knows what he expects of Mike Madonna. Remember, he led the team in tackles last year with 79 under Mike Madonna. So – it, it, it's painting the picture that Patrick Queen can be that guy. He can get another contract. This can be this year. He's just going to have to step up and play hard. He's going to have to ball out this year, Doug. You feel me? You know what I mean? And I think he will ball out this year. And um, I, I, I think that he will take that 79 solo tackles. 
think we're going to see a triple digit out of uh, Patrick Queen this year. I think we're going to see 100 solo tackles or 100 plus solo tackles out of him. I believe we're going to probably get the two interceptions. He's not a big um, coverage linebacker, in my opinion. Can he play coverage linebacker? Yes. But I think his 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 best attribute is playing downhill and going at the running backs and tight ends. I, I, that just, I think that's where he's going to flourish at. I think he's going to be able to now that Roquan is that is the main guy in that middle that a lot of teams are going to forget about Patrick Queen. And this is where Patrick Queen is going to get off. I think he's going to have a great season this year. I believe he's going to have something to prove. He got to have something to prove this year. You feel me? And I, and he will prove it. Prove it. He, I, I, I just can see it. Cause like I said, um, he should be a Pro Bowl linebacker. He has to be a Pro Bowl linebacker. I think that's the only way he can really start uh, securing his bag is once he reached that Pro Bowl level, he got it. He has to make the Pro Bowl this year. He has to make uh, either he, – he, he has to make about second defense – the second defensive team. He has to make somewhere up in there. He has to start getting some of these uh, awards stacked up on. So when he comes to the table with EDC or any other team, he has to come with a a, a, a nice resume, a nice resume. Um, so most definitely, uh, uh, Patrick Queen is 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 is, is making to have a breakout year. So I'm, and, and another thing about Patrick Queen, man, he's not really injury riddled. You know, he had times that he had to miss some games, but at the lineup just a little bit. And it's not a it's not a no downplay to him because it's football. It's physical. It's a physical game. I expect him to miss um, a couple of games. But this has got to be the year that he kind of can't miss no games. He He can't miss no games. He had to lead the leading tackle. He has to lead. Uh, he has to get to his first his first Pro Bowl. He has to he has to make a lot of noise this year, in my opinion. I don't think that the Ravens is asking him to make all that noise in this one particular year, but he's going to have to make some type of noise for the Ravens uh, to even look at giving him a contract. Now, like I said in the beginning, EDC said he wants to give him a contract. He is looking to give him a contract. You know what I mean? It's just right now at the time, it's just not the right time to give him that contract. You feel me? And and and, and let's talk about this this draft because I, I know a lot of people believes that the Ravens had went to the draft this year and drafted a linebacker. Uh, what's his name? Is Trenton uh, Simpson? Do we all believe that Trent Simpson is Patrick Queen replacement? I'm gonna say no. I'm gonna say no. Can he be his replacement? Yes. You know what I mean? Because you already know your best ability is your availability. You feel me? So I do believe that Patrick Queen do um, – I'm, I'm sorry. I do believe uh, Patrick Queen replacement is coming or is behind him, but I don't think he's going to get replaced. You feel me? Um, Simpson, tremendous guy. Got the, the freakish um, – uh, uh, freakish abilities. You know, what I mean, he's he's very long, got long arms. Uh, he can rush the passer. He can, he most definitely can move. He can get the outside uh to the sideline to sideline. Um, I believe that he can most definitely sniff out the runs and be able to hit the runs. Now, my only thing is, I have to see it for him is his pass coverage, because if he has a so-so pass coverage, then we can't really bank on him. You know what I mean? And he's been a, a rookie. I'm not going to see – I don't believe he's going to see a lot of field so early this year. You know what I mean? Or a, a lot of field action this year. Because, like I said, it's still Patrick Queen's job. It's still showing uh, – it, sh- it, it should light a fire under Patrick Queen, in my opinion. You know what I mean? It should give him a spot to say, no, I'm not getting replaced. This is my contract year. Nothing is getting in the way. Not a player – not a not a nothing. <laughs> you feel me? And I honestly think that Simpson is not his replacement. Um, I just think that it, it's 
it's a draft needed. We most definitely need linebackers um, underneath us. And why not go young, too? If you can develop these young linebackers, um, so by the time, you know, Roquan, and even if we do keep Patrick Queen beyond this year, it's like once these guys get older a little bit, start slowing down, you got fresh legs to come in. Or if you look at it doing – Doing the heart of the season because you know this year is is it's going to be um some miles on our <laughs> some frequent fried air miles you feel me because this year just to give you a little taste we fly to London this year you know what I mean so us going to London this year is 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 we're going to need some fresh legs we're going to need a lot of fresh legs going up to London and coming back from London because you got to also remember that some of these games we can have. Uh, a back-to-back Thursday night. You can have two Thursday night uh, games in the season. You don't know what network is picking up. It's, it's just a lot of things that's coming up this year as far as the um, scheduling release. And we're going to need as much fresh bodies that we can possibly carry into the season this year. So I don't think Simpson is Patchy Queen replacement. No. Can he be? Yes. You know what I mean? That's the reason why. And, it, and it's best to have death going into the season in that position anyway. Because, like I said, man, it's been a couple of years that where we was depleted in that linebacker and in that DB position. So I think that's where the, this is why the Ravens went, uh, got in death as far as linebackers and DBs this year. So I believe Simpson, do, Simpson will see the field this year, but I am not saying that he is Patrick Queen's replacement. No, I think this is the year, like I said in, in the beginning, this is the year that Patrick Queen will show out. I believe this is the year that Patrick Queen will get his job done and will get his contract back at the bank this year. I believe EDC wants him. I believe that Patrick Queen wants to stay here also. You know what I mean? And let's 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 give let's give some professional uh props to Patrick Queen, man, because when he declined his fifth year option, man. He could have asked for a trade. He could have went to social media and say, I want this to happen. I need this to happen or anything in that nature. Now, so far, so good. It looked like he's all about the grind. He's all about putting into that work. He's all about getting better this year. So let's give our hats off to him, man. And, and like I said, I believe he will be a Raven in the next upcoming years, man. I believe he will get a deal. And I'm going to go ahead and stat that. He will get a deal and will be um, a, a flocker in the next couple of years. Up and coming, man. Man, he's going to be right next to Roquan um, for the next couple of years. Now, what type of deal are we looking to get, Patrick Queen, man? I don't know if the Ravens can afford or is willing to give him a five-year deal, in my opinion. Not 100% sure. But, um... I would give him a three-year deal. You know what I mean? I would give him a three-year deal. The the money, uh, I don't know about the money-wise, you feel me? Um, because, like I said, I don't know where we at for us cap space. And I do know that our cap is it's getting a little low. It's getting down there. You know, we signed our, uh, our quarterback, you feel me? And we signed Roquan uh, in, in the, in the offseason also, so. I'm pretty sure Cap is, is is a little low, but I'm pretty sure I got I got faith and I believe in EDC and I believe he can get things done. And I also believe he will get things done. You feel me? So man, uh that we have it right there, man. I appreciate y'all joining this episode. No hell to the queen, man. And I and I really hope y'all really did enjoy this episode. Uh I hope y'all enjoyed my last episode. Um, a whole lot of flock that is out right now. Make sure y'all go tune into the grid network um, to sh- uh, show some love, man. Just give me your opinion on Lamar getting his new contract and our new draftees. Also, once this episode drops, man, make sure y'all give me your opinion um, on Patrick Queen. Should he get his fifth year? Uh, should he get a new contract, as I should say, for the Ravens? If not. If y'all don't believe that the Ravens will give him a contract, where do y'all see him going? <laughs> you know what I mean? That that, that that's a that that would most definitely spark off another uh conversation. So make sure y'all go comment um on any of my platforms, whether it's on YouTube. Make sure y'all follow the Grid Network because this is where 
is all uh, being shown that you feel me? or you can follow my TikTok at the bank underscore podcast. You feel me? Or you can follow my Instagram at the bank underscore podcast. Or you can go ahead and follow my Twitter at the at the bank underscore pod where you can go ahead and uh, give me your comments. Give me your your feedback on is Patrick Queen going to be a Raven uh, beyond this year. You feel me? So there we have it, man. I appreciate y'all for tuning in at the bank. You feel me? Make sure y'all go tune in at the grid network where we have plethora of different shows. You feel me? We got your general sports as um, clutch sports. With my man Ryan Flowers, we have all even podcast with my man Barry. We got carving up with carving up the podcast with my man Bryson Carver, or we most definitely got your very own Mr. MTMO. My thoughts, my opinion, um, is also on that network. So please just make sure y'all go check out this dope network, man. I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. You feel me? And make sure as I'm right here talking about, man, make sure y'all go check out my 105th thought. With Mr. Eugene Campbell, man, it is a real dope interview, man. It is, it's, it's real dope. You feel me? And make sure y'all go follow uh, MTMO also, man. And as always, my flockers, man, big trust, man. And I see y'all on the next episode. And I see what I'm gonna be talking about next week. You feel me? Always big trust. <laughs>